Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hasban Allah wa Nima Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Monday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Good morning. Trust you're fine. Trust your weekend was fine. Last Friday, we were hit with a very disturbing news. A news announcing to us that we're a country in crisis. And it came in a letter signed by the Honorable Minister for Information, Kojo Ponkruma, and the direction from the President. That's the letter. It says it's dated July um, 1, 2022. The President of the Republic, Nana Adodankwe Kufado, has authorized Finance Minister Ken Ufriata to commence formal engagement with International Monetary Fund, inviting the fund to support an economic program put together by the government of Ghana. This follows a telephone conversation between the President and the IMF Managing Director, Ms. Krista Lina uh, Georgieva, uh, con conveying Ghana's decision to engage with the fund. At a meeting on June 30th, um, 2022, Cabinet indicated its support for the decision. The engagement with the IMF will seek to provide balance of payment support as part of a broader effort to quicken Ghana's build back in the face of challenges induced by the COVID-19 pandemic and recently the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Okay, so this was signed by Honorable Kojo Ponkrumah. Now, this meeting was held on the 30th. In any serious country, in any serious country, the first thing that I learned in school as a public relations student is that in crisis management, honesty is key. Honesty is the first thing in crisis management, that you are honest. You accept, uh, what do you call it, the, the crisis, the situation as it is, and you show remorse for it. This government has not shown remorse for leading us down this ditch. Thus far, if you listen to the communication, this government has not shown any form of remorse at all. Say we admit that we are in a difficult place. Has anybody apologized to us for leading us this, this way? Because we have a Yale, we have Harvard, we have Oxford, we have all of them. We have the men. They have not apologized. Don't take the letter off, put it there. They have not apologized to us. And I'm saying that in crisis management, the first thing you do is to be honest, be candid with the people that you're communicating with. Now, pay attention to this one. The meeting was held on the 30th of June. Cabinet meeting, Thursday. Now, we got this notice. After midday, on Friday. So, deliberately, somebody was trying to avoid the morning shows. Deliberately, somebody was trying to manage PR and avoid the midday news. Deliberately. And I'm saying this. Deliberately, because if you had a meeting on the 30th, I know that this, this, these, some of these notices are pushed out quickly. Are you suggesting to me that if, if the, the, the economy of Ghana had been ranked number one in Africa, we would have waited until after morning shows and after midday to bring it out? So we deliberately had to wait. Two, it says this follows... Um, the engagement with IMF will seek to provide balance of statement uh, support as part of the broader effort. No, this is not what I'm looking for. Now, it says that uh, to commence formal engagement with the International Monetary Fund, inviting the fund to support an economic program put together by the government. When was this program put together? Because the IMF is coming to support what we have put together. When was it put together? That's the conversation. How long ago was it put together? How long ago was this or these programs put together that the IMF is now coming to support? Because we had been told consistently, even last week in Parliament, we had been told that we are not going back to IMF. It's on record. Check the hands out. So at what point did we know that we were already going to IMF? Our minds were prepared by Mr. Gabi Asari when he told us that he, he, he is not entirely against IMF. IMF is not bad. What IMF means is that somebody has seen that you have shown irresponsibility in managing your own affairs, so a big headmaster is coming down to manage your books for you. 
What that means is that you have failed. And an admission of failure is important. Let's go to the tweets, the screenshots. Today I came to play receipts for you. And I want that honest admission from the government. The honest admission from the government. Play for me. Now, this is Nanado Dankwe Kufuado. In 2015, when he wanted to be president, on his third attempt, he tweeted from an iPhone. He said, for the first time in hashtag history, an oil-rich country, some five years into oil production, is seeking a bailout from the IMF. This is Nanado's own work. See why I want another to address us? He should be telling us how we got here because he seemed to know and to have a magic wand as to how this shouldn't have happened. We still have oil. In fact, we have more oil. We sell more now. Six years into his government, this is where we are. This is his vice president. Around the same 2015, Dr. Baumian, he says, Mr. Chairman, the IMF bailout was totally avoidable if the government had listened to the sound advice from many quarters much earlier. But government refused to listen. They believed in their own propaganda and said, Yen Tiobia, we won't listen to anyone. When government was cautioned about the scale of borrowing, the government responded that they would borrow more. Now that their propaganda has been exposed by economic reality, they are now forced to listen to the IMF. We have moved from Yen Tiobia to Yebetie in IMF in Kwa. Uh, we listen to IMF only. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, IMF bailout will, uh, with the anchor hold distinguished speaker series 24th March 2015. All the things that Dr. Baumia is talking about here is a replay of what we have now. Ahomaswa Krasi, Aswadin Krasi, Akakabin Krasi, Jair Krasi. That is what we have now. Because we won't listen. We don't listen. We don't listen. And that you, you, do, you don't listen. Sometimes when you, when you, you keep talking and talking and talking, and nobody's listening. We don't listen. This is another one. Baumia to Mahama. Your rescue mission was going to IMF to rescue the economy you mismanaged. Did he also mismanage the economy? I am asking, did he also mismanage the economy? Danny, pull the other one for me. That, there are about six of them. Pull, the, pull all of them for me. And I, I'm saying that this is where we need them to step forward. Be men. Don't just accept that we're in a terrible place. Apologize for us being in a bad place. This is Professor Lord Mesa. Check the date. Friday, 11th October 2019. He warned. He said, Ghana likely to go back to IMF. And he mentioned why he thinks that, and if we, if we, we don't listen. Because we think that, oh, we are the ones who have been voted for. We are the ones who know. So those, are, those people who went to uh, other schools other than the Harvard and the Yale, they don't know nothing. And I'll tell you why, how this government has demonstrated that they don't listen. PDS, what happened to PDS? PDS, that government itself said, we should sing and praise them because they themselves have found fraud. You go negotiate, sign a deal, conditions precedent, conditions subsequent. You didn't listen and you led that into a ditch. And then when you pull the plug, after not accounting properly, you come and tell us we should clap for you. PDS is one. A Japa is another one. You remember when we raised questions about a Japa? The minority raised questions, CSOs raised questions. A Japa, we were told that, look, we have the cumulative experience of 80 years. Charles said, Dubai, all those people, they told us 80 years experience. Where is the Japan now? We are seeking to reintroduce it after we failed, woefully, even signed it on a non existent law. We don't listen in this country. And that is where our problem is. We don't listen. Then he take me back to the IE, Dr. Baumia, with the, the lady in an interview, and he will give us the reason we are back at the, I, I, the IMF. Take me back, Danny. And I, I demonstrate this to you because I think that, and I, I, I think that on behalf of Ghanaians, I'm demanding an apology from government. An apology from government. You press us down. IMF, now it's, some say if Momo fails, I say it's Mohammed's fault. If Momo fails, I say it's Mohammed's fault because everything is John Mahama. Even when we, government has a chance now in 2022, we are 2023 until 2024, you are still mentioning somebody who was kicked out because of incompetence, according to you. Now, leading us to the IMF 
Is it the same leading to IMF that you called incompetent, or this one is totally different? Because that's the narrative I'm hearing, and I, oh, this one is different. Yada, yada. Play the video for me. This is why we got into the IMF. You were spending too much relative to revenues, which is true. You were borrowing too much, which is true. Your external payments position has deteriorated, which is true. And so you ended up, your growth is reducing, which is true. So you ended up at the IMF. And the IMF would impose certain conditions, which is true. And if you don't do certain things right, you will get, you will not, the anchor will not hold, which is true. So I'm not quite sure uh, what it is that is not true that I said. Uh, but I think, um, unfortunately, the supporters of this government and this government itself are very uh, reluctant to admit the truth even when it hits them in the face. Yeah. True. Thank Boss, the thing I hit you in the face, it has hit you in the face. Would you come in, Apollo? Is the anchor holding? Clearly not. It is not holding. I remember that when we went out of IMF, we organized Kenke and Wache party. So now that we're going back, what would we do? Kelewele party or Gobe party? You organized Kenke party for taking us out of IMF. Even after you had extended the program. Now we are back at IMF. Only two years after you had exited. So it's akin to the guy who <clears throat> is able to maneuver through, uh, you know, drive at top speed because he has the aid of a motorcade. As soon as and then he considers himself the best driver. As soon as the motorcade leaves, he has to do maneuvering, then he's stuck. And now I've heard the excuse that, oh, uh, Egypt is going to IMF, Tunisia is going to IMF, other countries are going to IMF. Which one of them said IMF was bad? You. You said IMF was bad. You bastardized IMF. You. If I were you, I would not even pass there. Because you said that there was no way we were going there. And anybody who said we should go there doesn't understand. He is what has warp logic. As da, 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 da. Today you are back there. Will you now eat an humble pie? Apologize to the people of this country. Because you gave the people false hope. Play Dr. Baumier's video for me again. Now I hear that, oh, this is uh, as a result of a global pandemic, blah, blah, blah. Play the video for me. The question that you, you, you have to ask is, if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? How? <laughs> the question that you, you, you have to ask is, if global, how can global phenomena skip Cote d'Ivoire and all the surrounding countries and only attack Ghana? But also how? How did yours happen? Because this is a global thing too. That all the excuses you are giving, I'm trying to show you what you have said in the past and what you are saying now, which is not sinking. Your easiest way is to accept and apologize that we got it wrong. That is how to manage crisis. Crisis 101. First, admit and apologize then we can sit down together and look for it. Until that time, when we try to play politics with everything, it won't work. And be reminded, when I, I came here, I said, breaking the A, people came attacking, people came insulting. When I did Kenkenomics, people said, hey, I talk about food inflation. People said, oh, I spoke about the exchange rate. People said, ah, I spoke about food. People said, hey, I spoke about the chair in the V8. People said, ah, I spoke about the ballooning numbers of uh, presidential services. Said, oh, I spoke about the four by fours. I spoke about the do nothing appointees who are chopping for my money. He said, hey, I talk about the wasted. He said, oh, everything I say, hey, hey, he's always criticizing. He doesn't like government. Hey, he's anti MPP. He's, uh, he has been paid by NDC. Yada, yada. Then, today, here we are. Can uh, uh, Canada Japan, honorable member of parliament, play his video for me? But if I hear some people argue that we should go to IMF, any government that goes to IMF has failed. And we haven't failed for the good works that we have done in this country. You should applaud Kenno Foriata. He's not well, but still, yesterday I heard them in war. All in the name of the country. 
We heard him in Wa. If you go to IMF, you have failed. Even for the E Levy implementation, we only did six of the town hall meetings instead of 16. We promised that we were going to do 16, even after we had already indicated that we we're going to improve. But the, big, the, the point I'm making is that Bosu said any country that goes to IMF has failed. So now that we, have, we are there, we have failed. And when you tell the people that you can do better than what somebody else was doing and you fail, you apologize. You apologize. It, it helps to bring down the pain and hurt that people feel because people are disappointed in this government. People are, even NPP people, I know, they have come, they are disappointed. What fail at all? F in chains. And at this point, Nanado Danko Akufuado, Dr. Baumia, and some of the ministers have become campaign managers for the NDC for free. Because every single day you are doing the government. Every single day you are campaigning for free for the NDC. They don't actually need to campaign. Listen to the same Canada, uh, Canada Japan. I, huh, trust me, you're sitting here and you're smiling. I am a, what are we going to say again? Somebody tested me, don't say anything about I am a, Me, I shouldn't say anything about I am a, I will say it. I will say it. You know, going into IMF is just like handing over power to NDC without a contest, straight away. Because the noise we made, and I chew my own words back when I said NDC went to IMF because of mismanagement of the party, uh, the government, or the economy. So if MPP is going to IMF, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? So, breaking the eight is going to be tough. You cannot use the face of those who broke, uh, who took us to IMF to break the, the eight. They don't work. My message to you is simple. You cannot read my lips, and I'm not scared of anybody in the party. I will tell you the gospel truth. Is the gospel truth. Those who take you to IMF cannot, this same face cannot break the eight. In Latin, Latin it says, verbum sapienti such as S. A word to the wise is enough. For Benjamin Zafor, he will be better I'm very, very sad today when I saw the publication that we are going to IMF. You know, that is what Mahama was praying for. He has got his, he's gotten his wish. It will not be easy. It will take hard work. It will take hard work. So we should brace ourselves that there's a tax ahead of us. Therefore, it's only unity. That will let us save through this breaking the age. You see everything that Mr. Kennedy Japan is saying, what Dr. Nyahota Maklo, what Dr. Ata Kennedy, I've stood here and said it before. I was attacked. And I say, when I say some things, it's difficult for people to accept it. Will you go and attack Mr. Kennedy Japan for saying this to you? The truth is one. The truth is one, if you take time to listen, things will be easier. Now we are all in it. We are all in the mess. It reach, it reach we all. It reach we all. When, now when the hardship comes, nobody will. And, and this is where we need to come to the center. How is it that we live in a country after practicing democracy from 1992, at least in the Fourth Republic, we still have a situation where it's winner takes all. Is Mr. Foriata the only, uh, what do you call it? Is Mr. Foriata the only economist that we have? Is he the only finance person that we have? I'm asking, is he the only one within the NPP itself that can do the finance minister job? That even when he's all well, we still keep him there. Why do we do this to ourselves? The man, you know, they see the thing top, but we still they keep him for there. Because of why? The man, he show we say, no, they see top. But we still, they keep on for them. We, they make, we are making excuses for him. Because of what? So what we are getting now is what I ordered versus what I'm, I'm getting. 
What was packaged for us, and like uh, the venerable uh, Mr. Pienim said, he said, if you dress up a donkey as a horse race, on the day of the race, it will be exposed for the ass that it is. That is what he said. He said it's a Dagomba proverb. And at this time, Dr. Baumia should be stepping forward to answer the 170 questions he gave to the late Mr. Arthur because he seemed to know what the solution would be. We need to cut down on our expenditure. We need to cut the wastage. We need to change the face of the government, sack people who are not performing. We need to sit up and all those people who are really not adding anything to our government, we need to take them off. We need to bring the best standard we can at this time, and that is what we should be doing. The impression we had about Nanado Danko Kufado is not the impression we are having we have now. I'm saying that the MPP government now is making Muhammad look more like an angel. Dr. Baumia and, and, and President Kufado are doing free campaign for John Muhammad. Why? Good morning.